Now let's return to where photography comes in. Once the Civil War is over and Americans are able to redirect their attention towards the movement westwards, the use of photography during those years, it was really instrumental for the, um, for the um, investment that was necessary to move westward, lay the railroads, set up the mines, build the towns, all, all of the, the movement westward, photography was instrumental in all of that. Images served a lot of different purposes, including the creation of maps and plans, geological, botanical, ornithological, and water studies, preservation of sites for national parks, and documentation of Native American living sites. These are all practical purposes for photography. Survey photography was particularly important because there was money to be made from it. So in these surveys, they had they invested money by commissioning and paying for photographers. The government, mining causes, and railway um, companies um, invested in hiring photographers to conduct these surveys to bring back documentation of the West that would be useful for them. Many photographs were made during this time that were reproduced and sold as lithographs in print shops. So those were made for commercial distribution, both for um, for mainstream distribution, just for people who might like to buy them, but also to be distributed to dignitaries and industrialists, people in government, people in industry that had an interest, that had a stake in this uh, in this movement westward. Photographs had a motive to be visually appealing, even while serving survey documentary functions. There was a reason for them to look good and be easy to visually understand. A couple of photographs documenting the expansion of the railways during this period. This is by Alexander Gardner, who you may remember from, uh, from Civil War photography. He actually entitled this photograph, Westward the Course of Empire Takes Its Way, naming it after that famous Emanuel Leutze painting of of the massive movement westward. So they're laying track um, 600 miles west of St. Louis. And this photograph is by Andrew J. Russell, and it documents the meeting of the rails at Promontory Point, Utah in 1869. So at this point, enough rails had been laid that they were able to join the western tracks to the eastern tracks, and it was possible to go across the entire country by train. Tremendous milestone achieved. This brings us to Timothy O'Sullivan. So after Timothy O'Sullivan's work during the Civil War, he had tremendous skills and a lot of connections in government. So he was hired to do survey photography expeditions in the 1860s and 1870s. He had many government commissions with corporate contracts. So these are sort of, you could think of them as public-private partnerships. These surveys addressed specific needs of the railways to know what was what they were up against, what the landscape was like, what the water sources were going to be like, what Native American settlements they were going to have to contend with, that sort of thing all had to be visually documented. So it addressed specific needs of the railways. <clears throat> it was it was financially backed by the Department of War. They had the, the um, administrative structures in place to commission photographers because of the Civil War and because of the Indian Wars because they were prepared to do battle if it became necessary, which it certainly happened. Um, they they were prepared to use this documentation to their advantage against a, any Native Americans that they would uh, that they were encounter that, that would get in their way. So they did. They documented the Native American territories um, during these survey expeditions. The travel routes that they um, that they created maxima that they created in the process of these surveys. Okay, they 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 were they were out there on these expeditions, following travel routes that had already been sort of stretched out before, but they sort of uh, helped to establish them more solidly in the process of uh, of developing the, these surveys. So these travel routes maximized the resources of towns that had been established along the way. Their photographs were framed to play up the openness of the landscape and geological features that one would encounter there. Human presence is often found there in Timothy O'Sullivan's photographs, and it's there for scale reference so that you can see the photographs and know by the, how big the people are in there, just how big everything else is in there. 
There were many other photographers participating in similar surveys for mining and railway backers. So we're just using Timothy O'Sullivan's very well-known work as, a, as sort of emblematic of all this other survey photography that's being done at this time. So this is uh, typical of Timothy O'Sullivan's Western survey work. It's um, it's structured as a photograph in a way that's visually easy to read. It's documenting a waterway. It's also showing some of these sort of instruments of their work and including a human being for scale. This photograph is from um, Colorado River in Arizona. Timothy O'Sullivan also used photography to document the other people on this uh, on the survey expedition that he was in, um, and some of, uh, they called them their native guides, the people that they met along the way who helped them to navigate the terrain and work there and, and find, find out the, uh, the names of geological features and things like that. So this is a, a geological feature that would have been completely unfamiliar to the consumers of these photographs. Okay, so this kind of uh, volcanic cone that, that you would encounter in the Western uh, landscape, this is the kind of thing that O'Sullivan had, had particular motive to document carefully and, uh, and, and in a, a way that would be, um, that would be useful and practical. And that's why you see the little head sticking up out of the top of it. He's got another member of the survey standing on the other side of the cone just to give you a clear visual mark marker for scale. And it seems strange and it seems alien. And that's part of what characterizes Timothy O'Sullivan's photographs. These landscapes that he photographs look strange and look threatening. They're visually interesting and compelling to look at, but they look strange. So this is his a, a pretty famous photograph of his desert sand hills near, near Sink of Carson, Nevada. So you can see this mule train It's part of the survey exhibition, expedition, right? So he's led the mule train out onto this enormous sand dune. You can actually see the tracks of the mule train and you can see the footsteps of, uh, uh, that, uh, that O'Sullivan made going from the wagon to where he set up the camera. So all of the evidence of how he set up this photograph is right there in front of us. It's not as if he's just acting like this photograph just happened, okay? He's giving us evidence that he's sort of put the pieces together to make this into a photograph. At the same time, it looks terrifying <laughs> because think about um, the people who are taking the risks in 1867 to pull up stakes and move westward. Well, he's trying to pitch this landscape to those people. Okay, They're creating these survey photographs to make it look like this is an investment worth making and this is a place worth going to. And at the same time, showing the dangers that are there and how forbidding the landscape really is. I mean, can you imagine taking an actual mule train across those sand dunes? Those wheels are not made for that, right? So, but, but he's, he's giving evidence of what this landscape is like to people who have never encountered something like it before. So the starkness of Timothy O'Sullivan's compositions and the, the heaviness and the sense of, uh, of foreboding and the strangeness of them, I think you can see tracing back to his photography during the Civil War. He saw a lot during the Civil War, the kinds of uh, the, the, the death and the horror and the devastation that he saw in the war. We've seen much evidence of that in, um, in his Civil War photography. And I think you can see his way of communicating that through the way that he composes his photographs. There's continuity between what you see in his Civil War photographs like this one and what you see in his landscape photographs. Here's another of, uh, of O'Sullivan's well-known landscape photographs, the Tufa Domes of Pyramid Lake, Nevada. This kind of geological, geological feature would have looked so strange and so alien to Eastern viewers of photography. It looks like something that came from another planet. And yet it is extraordinarily beautiful. And the beauty and the strangeness, the alienation and the vast openness of these landscapes really comes through very powerfully in these photographs that are made for, for survey purposes.
his um, his photographs of Canyon de Chal in Arizona um, show evidence of human habitation. Okay, they show what the living um, conditions were like for the the Native Americans who had already built their settlements there. Now, at the time that they photographed this, it was no longer occupied. These were ruins by the time <clears throat> by the time O'Sullivan and his uh, and his survey team um, came out there. But the evidence of how people had lived there is uh, is is distinct and visible. Um, notice the way that there's no real horizon in this photograph because he's in he's looking into a cliffside. So where we would expect there to be sky, there is cliff. So it, that that sense of uh, of strangeness and you could call it the sublime effect in the photograph is uh, it, it is really um, powerful and dramatic in um, O'Sullivan's photographs. This is a close up of one of the of that Canyon de Shell photograph that we were just looking at. Here, if you look carefully, you can see the human beings in the photograph to give us a sense of scale. So, on the lower left hand corner of uh, of this close up, you can see two men who are who are holding the bottoms of ropes that stretch up to the upper level, and there's a man standing on top of one of the walls in the upper region of uh, of the photograph. So that gives you a sense of scale. Another of uh, of Timothy O'Sullivan's photographs from this um, from from this geographic region shows the evidence of the Spanish settlers who had come out there centuries before. So that's that's Timothy O'Sullivan's visual style, working as a survey photographer, using some of that mood, some of that feeling of the aesthetic of the sublime to uh, to bring across just how vast and strange this Western landscape would have been um, to the people who moved out there. <laughs>